Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Timo Elliott. I'm an innovation evangelist for SAP, and I've been working with planning and analytics teams for around 30 years. And I'd like to talk to you about the technology aspects of storytelling. So uh, let's start with what's happening in the world. Uh, dashboards and analytics, of course, have been around for a long, long time. But recently, there's been a huge surge in demand. Why? Well, first, because uncertainty has exploded, not just the pandemic, but also global trade tensions, Brexit in Europe, um, the increased frequency of extreme weather events. So the, the rules of thumb and the standard ways of doing business, uh, the gut feel of business people have been thrown out of the window and business people want more actual data than ever. Second, the stakes are higher than ever. We're not really talking about tinkering at the margins of stable business models anymore. It's about using data for survival in the present and new business models in the future. So this has led to renewed interest in three areas in particular. So first, doing more with less. Everybody I talk to is interested in anything that can help, such as self-service or cloud or machine learning, or there's a lot of interest in robotic process automation. Second, people want a glimpse into the future. They want to know what's about to happen. So there's a huge amount of interest in leading indicators and scenario planning and predictive technologies. And um, finally, though, agility. We don't know what's going to happen. The only thing we can be certain about is that it's going to be different from whatever we expect today. So organizations have to be prepared to gather data faster and then learn faster and act faster than the competition. Next slide, please. Um, over the years, I've had the honor of working with perhaps hundreds of different dashboard and data visualization storytelling projects over the years. So here are some of the biggest technical barriers to success. The first and most important is trust, and we've already seen it in the surveys here. The most powerful and attractive dashboard in the world is useless if the underlying data is inaccurate. It's like putting lipstick on a pig. Almost all the organizations I've worked with have systematically underestimated the time and effort it takes to get good data and then get people to believe that it's good data. Second, there's nothing more frustrating than a visualization that indicates there's a problem but can't explain why when people have to go to a different set of tools rather than be able to just drill from a high level view down to the underlying business problem. Third, uh, everything today is changing so fast. So real-time access to data is more important than ever. As we saw in the survey, only 35% of organizations today say that their C-suite executives have access to real-time data. Technology is helping. The power of cloud platforms and new in-memory systems are making this more achievable than ever. For the storyboarding, uh, planning analytics teams, as we've heard, shouldn't just deliver the figures. They should be pre-interpreted and annotated and adding maps, as Angelica said, to deliver the key insights to their business stakeholders in a way that they can really easily understand and act upon. It has to be simple and business-centric. And finally, executives want to be able to compare what-if scenarios in order to make the best decisions. Let's look at some quick examples of dashboards in action. So first, this is uh, SAP CFO, Luka Mucic, demonstrating the dashboards that we use across all of our systems. Um, there's storyboarding. Uh, it's used directly in board meetings instead of PowerPoint slides. So for example, it's used for pipeline forecasting, and it's been particularly useful recently with all the changes. Um, just one example, we canceled almost all staff travel and physical events. And the system was used to project the effects on profitability. So it has full support for value drivers and what if analysis and scenario planning in the cloud. So the idea is in the boardroom, uh, one of the board members can say, well, but what if that number were different? And we can see in real time against the real data what effect that would have. Next example is from a company called Ferrera Candy. Um, it's just a recent nice example of a, a company that undertook a big acquisition where they needed a lot of visibility and they were able to get the information they needed to run the business in real time, literally at their fingertips to accelerate the combination of the different systems that they needed to undertake. And finally, uh, the dashboards have been used recently to help organizations of all kinds cope with the pandemic. Next slide, please. 
for example, the busiest emergency department in the US used a cloud-based dashboard to quickly bring data together from multiple different systems to get the insights they needed for literally life-saving decisions. And here you can see the country of Morocco using it for the same kind of purpose. Looking forward, uh, next slide, there are some great new exciting opportunities with storytelling, with AI-driven analytics and planning. Fully 37% of organizations are planning to implement these kinds of technologies within the next couple of years, according to the FP&A trends um, survey that we sponsored. So, for example, we can just make it easier to access data than ever before, the ability to ask questions using natural language. Uh, show me the budget versus actuals by region or by product or business unit. So, no clicking on buttons, just asking questions. Then we can use AI to do some of the data crunching for us, uh, automatically spotting anomalies and outliers and determining the primary influences on key indicators, helping guide our analytics and help explain what's happening behind the numbers. And I'm seeing massive interest in all kinds of predictive planning, the ability to easily create a predictive forecast from your planning model and then inject the results directly into your projections is just incredibly useful, not just for expense and cost planning, but also revenue and sales planning and headcount planning and so on. Uh, lots of organizations that I'm talking to are using this from constructions to car parks to uh, airlines. Ultimately though, success with dashboarding and data storytelling isn't about technology. Next slide, it's fundamentally about people, about your information culture. Uh, inertia is a huge problem. People cling to the old ways of looking at numbers, even when they're shown something better. So there have to be incentives in place. Managers have to send a clear top-down signal that only data from the system will be accepted for decision-making, for example. No spreadsheets on the sides in the meeting. In particular, um, there's a lot of problems when the indicators start flashing red, where something goes wrong. In some organizations, the dashboards are used as a bat to assign blame rather than as a tool to come up with constructive solutions. And so people spend time optimizing their excuses rather than fixing the underlying problem. In general, I find people don't spend enough time thinking through these people problems. Data is not neutral, not when somebody's a career or li livelihood might be on the line. It's not a technology exercise. It really does impact company processes, teams, and individuals. And uh, data has to be actionable. You can't just show everything. Lots of effort needs to go into making sure that the indicators really are actionable. Why do you want to see that number? What would too high be? What would you do if it were too high? And finally, I see a lot of brittleness in dashboarding and data visualization projects, far more than any other area. Executive sponsors leave, the new executive, almost by definition, wants to see a different set of indicators in a different format and a different tool and everything cycles around again. So if you want consistency over time, there has to be a broad consensus around the KPIs that you're tracking, around the stories that you want to tell. And the technology itself has to, of course, be flexible enough to be able to adapt to the changes as people come and go.